Research at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I'm a researcher and evaluator for the Aspire Alliance. I'm an embedded evaluator with the Regional Collaborative. And I'd like to pass it to either of my RC colleagues, Lisa or Jessica, uh, who would like to introduce themselves now. How about you, Jess? Is that okay? Hi. Um, why don't, uh, well, my name is Jessica Bennett. I actually work with um, the Aspire uh, Institutional Change Network. So I'm here to learn just as much and kind of help uh, understand and also ask any questions anyone might have about how institutional change and the regional collaboratives may kind of align or work together. Okay. And, and Lisa? Um, me? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. um, I'm Lisa Kelly. I am at the University of Iowa and I'm at the Iowa Regional Change. Okay. And Craig, is it recording? I got it to record. I managed to okay. push um, some combination of buttons. I'm not quite sure what was the magic trick, but it worked. So. Okay. Thank you, friends. I'll yield the floor to Craig. Okay. Well, very good. Well, well it's exciting to have everybody here. Um, I don't know if I could ask Julia if you could sort of uh, take down people's names or do a screen capture of the participant list and we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that you get a copy of the slide deck or as, as we also said, it'll be up on the website. Uh, so, so this is a, um, uh, you know, uh, we have a few slides to go through, but really it's just a, a, a time, uh, I hope, to answer any of your questions. So my name is Craig Ogilvie. I am uh, in charge of the uh, regional um, change initiative, which is part of the Aspire Alliance, which is one of the NSF um, includes grants, uh, alliance grants. Uh, and so we are, um, we've been going for just over a year as, a, as an includes grant and we've been, um, year before that we were a pilot grant. So uh, we've, we've, we've got the main thrust of our work that we'll be talking about today is, is being more intentional about preparing graduate students and other qualified professionals for teaching at community colleges. So I think I've waffled long enough. Let me get to the slide deck. I gave people a few minutes to join in. Um, let me see if I can do this and share my screen. All right. Can somebody give me affirmation that they can see the screen? Oh, very good. Thank you. All right. So, so um, we use a, a couple of uh, acronyms. Um, uh, we use RC for two things. I'll try to make it um, um, obvious which one it is. It's regional change or regional collaborative. Regional change is our, our mechanism and our collaborative is this partnership between two-year and four-year universities in a region. Um, what we're going to do today, uh, we're going to go through a brief introduction to the big picture of the Aspire Alliance. Uh, we are approximately one-third of the Aspire Alliance. Uh, I'll go uh, overview of the regional change, uh, the application and materials, the timeline, and hopefully we'll have a lot, a lot of time um, to, to turn to your questions. So um, this is a, a busy slide. I'll, I'll blow up the different sections uh, in a moment. Um, NSF is pouring um, uh, considerable um, effort and funds into their a major diversity and inclusion initiative, which are the includes alliances. Their, their big, big um, pitch or bet or, or, or sort of rationale, if you want, is that uh, a, a lot of the diversity initiatives that have gone in past have been remarkable pieces, um, a remarkable commitment by various very talented individuals but their, 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 their idea is that if we can work more 
uh, as alliances and partnerships, um, then we'll be able to make more progress. So that's why you keep on hearing these words about um, alliances and collaborations and partnerships. So the Aspire Alliance um, is, is largely to do with the higher education landscape, and in particular, uh, trying to see if we can diversify um, uh, the faculty level. Uh, and that's an amazingly ambitious, um, when I look at the goals, it is to try to make a national um, impact on the diversity of, of faculty across the country. At, at all levels of higher education landscapes from community colleges to, to, to four years. So it's a very ambitious project. And again, um, the part that each of us to play is somewhat sort of, you know, we, we have our own area, but we're, we're working collaboratively to try to make that large scale change. So the, the big pitch um, that we made uh, to NSF is that if we can make a, um, a, a change on the um, on the on the faculty side. This will have long-term benefits, well, immediate benefits, but long-term benefits for higher education on the success of underrepresented students. There's a lot of literature that shows that that diversifying faculty is 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 um, I can only help um, benefit the success of of all students, and in particular underrepresented students. So the Alliance is sort of split into three, uh, and, and we'll talk mainly today about the middle one, um, but there are parallel projects and that they, 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 they link up. Um, so the, the three parallel projects are uh, working uh, on, on institutional change. Uh, and these, this is typically done in cohorts of about 15 universities or community colleges at a time. And it's it's each each institution commits to taking a, a long hard look at its how it's recruiting and retaining and leading to the success of of underrepresented faculty, and they work through a, a change process um, uh, t together as a cohort. Some of those institutions are in the regions that we've started, so that's the linkage. Um, but the regional change initiative itself is mainly focused on. Uh, increasing the diversity of, of faculty at two-year colleges and that's through partnerships between graduate colleges um, and um, two-year uh, two colleges. Uh, I'll talk more about that in the next few slides and the, the, the final initiative is really the national change which has got a, a couple of um, um, uh, flagship projects uh, part of it is really working with the national professional societies, um, which are the place where a lot of faculty hold very, very close uh, professional identity. So what can be done within the professional societies to support uh, um, students on the way through to their um, uh, um, plans to, be, to be, become faculty members but also what can be done with the current faculty members to think about how to um, use the national networks to sort of mentor and support students through their aspirations. It's also a place where uh, a lot of best practices on inclusive teaching, uh, leadership development, uh, and, uh, and, and advising um, um, how, to, how to prepare faculty uh, better for their roles in teaching in a, ever increasing diverse environment. And again, the regional collaborative is the beneficiary of many of those national change uh, initiatives and the institutions that are going through this change draw on the work that the national change uh, does. So while there's three initiatives, there's a lot of uh, cross linkages. All right, so our regional change project. Um, uh, we, we're, we're a group uh, of, I would say, currently about 30 or 40 active participants on our meetings. Um, it's, it's pretty much uh, split between um, leadership at two-year colleges and leadership at four-year colleges. Uh, uh, I, the, the, the goals that we've worked through um, are certainly to diversify um, 
uh, the the number of um, uh, people interested in in pursuing a teaching c career at two-year colleges, uh, but also uh, for 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 all all faculty um, to prepare their preparation to to teaching in a very diverse uh, environment at the two-year colleges. So it's got those two aspects of those two goals. Uh, the reason for the regional focus is during our pilot, uh, Julia and Lucas Hill and others you know, built on an, um, uh, a, a literature base that showed that many two-year faculty are employed uh, in the same state as they did at their, uh, their um, graduate work in. There was a lot of career um, pathways between that graduate work and the, and the faculty position and a lot of interesting variations that we're sort of trying to figure out how to then um, what the right intervention points are. Uh, but based on that, we, we, we started setting up um, these regional collaboratives. And these, I just have to say, have been about the most satisfying um, uh, partnerships that I've ever done in my professional life. Um, we've a lot of uh, four year, two year partnerships exist um, primarily on um, the topic of undergraduate transfer. Uh, but this has been a, a deeper and richer conversation, which is uh, you know, the four years uh, we, we, we have uh, graduate students who are interested in teaching careers, um, interested in giving back to the community, uh, and they, 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 they want to know more about this career option that they may not know much about. Uh, our two-year um, colleges are quite often looking uh, for, for, for faculty and in particular for, 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 for underrepresented faculty, and they have uh, such a depth of expertise of how to teach at community colleges and pedagogies and how to um, take into account all the, the complex and rich lives that students have at community colleges. So it's been a, it's been a wonderful um, synergy of expertise and effort and it's been a real joy in my life. So to give you a sense of what the regions do, um, though in full disclosure on this slide, the, the, the work on the left is much more advanced than the work on the right. Um, what we've found is that a lot of the students um, and professionals who may be interested in community colleges uh, don't know much about uh, how to, um, uh, you know, what is needed, or what the credentials are, how many credits they need, you know, do they just need a master's, they mean master's and 18 credits in different disciplines. <coughs> so we've um, set up that, that, a, that a pretty uh, low hanging fruit is to, is to convey information to graduate students who might be considering this, this career. That's been pretty much through uh, two ways. Uh, we have uh, national virtual panels of community college faculty each of those webinars, we've had about 40 or 50 graduate students who are interested. Um, we've also, each region's hosted visit days where, you know, a van load of graduate students will, um, will have a full day is scheduled at a local community college and they'll meet faculty and they'll, they'll talk about the hiring process and the adjuncting process. And, and both of those are really just to, to, to try to have graduate, um, uh, community college faculty describe what graduate students need need to know um, about uh, about this teaching career. I, I think the most interesting initiative that we've done in the regions, um, and, and I will admit that this was being um, tested in different places. There's been a couple of them in, in exist extant in California, but they're not widespread. Which are these teaching practicums or internships? So this is a sort of a way to get um, graduate students and, and other qualified professionals into a community college classroom. It's kind of analogous uh, in the high school experience where, where uh, a, a, a future teacher would be mentored. Uh, in the same way a graduate student here is, is matched up uh, with a community college, experienced community college faculty member. Uh, they observe um, the uh, the classroom. 
They talk with the family member about what happened, what their aspirations are, and they may take one or two um, units. They do a sort of a, a lesson plan and iterate that with the faculty member and then, and then try to um, um, you know, spend a couple of hours in the classroom gaining that experience. So that gives uh, the student a sort of a taste of what it might be like, gives them a connection. Uh, and, and then the, the thing which we're putting into place, and it may be that we haven't, I, so the, the, the practicum we have in place, the virtual visit days and the virtual panel we have in place, what we're working on in the next year is this mentored adjunct. Um, so we, 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 we know that um, uh, an adjunct experience is an absolutely critical part um, to becoming a full-time faculty member. Uh, where we're, we're certainly sensing that there's a gap um, in, in many places in providing mentoring um, for uh, new adjuncts. So those two in the in the middle there, uh, what we're doing in, inside the uh, regions is those are competitive applications and we're targeting, the, targeting those to uh, underrepresented students. Uh, as, our, as our primary way to try to increase the diversity of the faculty at two-year colleges. Uh, the final box is that, again, with things like this uh, national uh, initiative, there's a lot of material that can help uh, adjuncts and uh, community college uh, faculty um, you know, be even better uh, educators. And so we're making sure that whatever resources we develop elsewhere in the project, those are available to community colleges within the regions. Uh, so our regional network um, has developed a little bit ad hoc. Um, we have got four. Uh, we, we have one in Iowa, which, which I've been part of. Um, we have one in Southern California. We have two in Texas. Um, Texas is such a huge state, state. Um, uh, and, and, and essentially the, the, the change mechanism is that um, what we want to do is, 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 is work at the same time developing this initiative. Right? So the idea of the, um, uh, it, it sort of goes as a sort of a, a small network improvement community that, that each of us has been developing this regional collaborative the regional collaboratives in each of the regions of the country look slightly different based on the sort of the, the history and the culture and the ge geographical constraints. Uh, but we're all, we're all connected by the same goals and we all use the same assessments of our initiatives. And so we're sort of um, making progress by learning from each other. Certainly the thing that we learned um, is that each regional collaborative takes time to build uh, a lot of discussions between two years and four years about the faculty pathways, about faculty diversity, um, but and they certainly can build on the on the connections that most probably are there, which is about undergraduate transfer. And so that's the the motivation behind these planning grants is to give new regions um, this year. Uh, to sort of build those uh, connections and to be ready um, uh, to uh, propose uh, a request for a, a, a new region in about a year's time. Um, so I'll finish with this slide and I'll stop and take questions before we get into mechanics. So the planning grant um, is, is essentially to plan a new region, uh, regional collaborative uh, is to spend a year doing doing this relationship work, um, uh, talking about what what might work and what 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 might be the you know how you adapt what we've been doing so far. Um, uh, certainly, plan uh, how you would support um, uh, the the graduate students and qualified professionals interested in this career, and with the goal that in about a year's time uh, you'd submit uh, uh, an, an an implementation grant. Julia, I see there's been a little bit of chat activity, but I haven't been able to monitor it. Yes, so we had one question from Deborah, which was asking, could you please clarify, the literature indicates that many two-year faculty tend to come from graduate training. 
Uh, and so I can simply yield the floor to Deborah to let her elaborate on the question. Deborah, would you like to add to your question? Uh, no, so the, the full question was, does the literature suggest that this is a positive or a negative? And Craig, would you like to comment on a that? Positive or negative about the regionality? Yes. Oh, I think it's a positive. Um, uh, um, I, I, you know, I, you know, I certainly think that there will be some people if they feel like they've benefited from our preparation and they are ready to find a community college career um, that they will reach out nationally. Uh, but I think the vast majority of our 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 students that we've been talking to have 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 strong ties to a region um and 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 this is in many cases why they went to graduate school um uh, was to get this certification to to teach at a community college uh, so i i expect the majority of the people that we have in our programming will 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 still want to stay locally um uh, but there will be some that will say, "Look, you know, I've, I'm, I'm now, I'm energized and confident, and let me see what is, what, what else is out there." So there were no other questions in the chat. All right. So I think you were going to take on the mechanics, weren't you, Julia? I was. Or do you want me to keep on doing and you can monitor it, whatever you want to do? Um, well, I'm happy to give an overview of the application and criteria, and then we can certainly open back up to all questions about okay. the entire process. So we don't need to spend a lot of time on it because we really want to have a discussion about everything involved in the request for proposals and all that goes into it. So everything you need to know about the application and the criteria and what we're looking for can be found on the Aspire Alliance website in the regional change section. So if you were to visit our website or if you've not done so already, you can find a description and a very lengthy elaboration of everything that Craig just shared. In the application instructions section, there is an example application. And when you click on that, it can give you the option to open it as a Google Doc. You can then save it and edit it and take as much time as you wish to address the six substantive questions. And they have the section header titles that you can see on the slide there. And we've provided the relative weight associated with each of those six sections. And the way you then submit the application by the 16th of August is by clicking on a Qualtrics link, uh, which is also provided on the Aspire website. It's a very, very brief uh, web-based survey in which you provide your contact information and then upload a completed PDF in which you filled out the answers to the question and that that's it it's a very simple process if you have any questions about that procedure please do contact us so as i said there are six sort of questions about what what we're hoping for and about how you would put this proposal forward the planning grant team is a description of who would lead the application itself and the most important part, as you can see there, is that we need to have a co-lead from a two-year institution and a four-year institution. And that's to go toward that partnership and collaborative that Craig has put so much emphasis on today. And then there are the other aspects that I think we can get to by going to the next slide. I'm happy to go through each of the six questions in detail, but they are somewhat um, I mean, they're in full sentence questions, and so, um, you know, we can go back to that if we wish. But the most important part is, what would you plan to do in the course of this year? What kind of activities would you and the team that you would construct together among two-year and four-year institutions do 
to begin to put this collaborative together in your area. What kind of discussions would be necessary? What kind of activities would you plan? And then what would begin to put you toward readiness to put forward an implementation proposal? The next part would be explaining to us what kind of regional connections and collaborations and partnerships do you already have in place? Or are you planning? And then finally, what sort of regional characteristics do you have in place? What are the, where are you in the, in the country? Uh, what kind of, uh, what are the nature of your community college and your four-year institutions? And we would balance that against the regional collaboratives that already exist. Could you go to the next slide? Okay, and so this is the timeline for application. So uh, as you can see, we're doing this. You have quite a bit of time to prepare the applications and then we will let you know um, very shortly after in August um, when the awards will be notified. Craig, did you want me to go in greater detail about the criteria? No, no okay. I, I'm good. Um, so. I, I, I saw there was one question on the chat. Um, so I think yes. I mean, it's a it's a it's a group of colleagues. I mean, this is you know we got it. We we were fortunate and honoured to get the grant from NSF. But you know we're we're a group of colleagues. So if somebody was to get a planning grant, we would we would make accessible. You know our our. Um, uh, we have a shared drive, shared Google Drive of all the resources, things that we're doing, um, uh, the details about the teaching practicums, uh, the visit days, uh, the the mentored adjunct program. So all that, uh, the planning grants was certainly um, uh, teams would have access to those. Uh, you could also, if you were, um, you know, interested, you could, you could, you, you would be welcome to, to join in on any of our regular conference calls. It wouldn't be a requirement, but if you found it useful, uh, you'd be welcome to. Mm. What did I just do? Well, um... Bonnie, you're unmuted. Oh, we're live. Yes, you are. I'm sorry. Do you have a question? No. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the 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 question was about the um, uh, the implementation grants. Um, we have a, a a budget for the implementation grants that is uh, I, I I I'm not sure I have the exact number. It's on the order of of fifty thousand dollars a year. Uh, it may be up to seventy thousand. We were we were we were trimmed at the last moment by NSF. Um, so, so that's the sort of the order of the uh, of the implementation grants, and we slated that for th for, for 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 three years. Right. So, it's it's as you know, this is one of these tricky things that um, we want to give the 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 RCs, the new RCs, a sort of a somewhat comparable experience to what the the prototype RCs have had, which has got some grant funding to kick off. Um, but we also realize that this has to be, uh, in some sense, sustainable. So, so it's not a lot of money, um, both by constraint of how much money we got in the grant, but also because somehow, you know, this is a collaborative effort between two years and four years. And if it's to sustain into the future, you know, it really perhaps shouldn't start off with a, with a, with a gold-plated budget. So what we found most of our costs are, uh, you know, um, you know, stipends for for mentors, 
salaries for people who do the coordination work, uh, travel to events and things like that. So, so I, I think it's viable to keep this at a sustainable level. Uh, okay, Jessica has asked what are the usual roles for the co-leads at the two years and the four years. Um, so what we've found so far is that um, the two years uh, leader um, is somebody who is uh, in a um, in a role that is thinking about the faculty hiring process. Um, Depending on which community college you are in, that can be um, uh, at, at, at a, a sort of division level, uh, at, you know, arts and sciences, um, but somebody who is, 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 is connected to that. There have been some people who come from more center for, um, for you know, education, right? So there's certainly some people, the teaching and learning centers at the community colleges have been, have been involved in the leadership team. Uh, the four year, at the moment we're finding most of the four year leaders are connected to the graduate colleges, right? uh, is, is the primary locus uh, where the four year leaders are coming from. Um, that's just the model we have, and we're not we're not at all implying that that's the only model that 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 could work. Yeah, Christine asks, yeah, it's, what's the by all means? Uh, just you can describe in the planning ground how you'll extend it. I mean, this is the summer, uh, so we do not anticipate that everybody will have the full collaboration in place by, by mid August, right? So if you, uh, the, the idea is to spend the next year with a little bit of funds so you can travel and meet and talk and, and, and sit down with people to try to figure out what you would most like to do. So by the time you submit your planning grant, you can just have a, a, a core team and then spend the next year building that out. Well, let me just make sure I've communicated my excitement. I, I have worked on multiple projects uh, before and I am still multiple projects. Um, the, the graduate students that we're working with are just um, so um, uh, excited to be, um, you know, have this chance to, uh, the, the teaching practicum feedback is wonderful. Um, uh, the, the community college mentors that they've been working with are just uh, dedicated uh, and excited about um, supporting somebody on, their, on this path. Uh, the visit days tend to be oversubscribed. Um, we've had waiting lists for our vans to go down to the, to the campus. Uh, it, it's, it's ended up being that something, you know, this this pathway or this career option for graduate students is um, you know, not talked about much and it's, it's sort of, uh, uh, and so the goal is to sort of be, be much more intentional uh, about it. Um, you know, where we are is that we are starting to make progress and getting more and more students um, supported as they're following through this, 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 this career directory. Um, and what we're finding is that, you know, each of those processes is different and I were in Texas and California. So we're looking forward to expanding the geographical reach because I'm sure it's different in your parts of the country.
last call for any questions. Hi, Craig. Can you hear me? Yep. Hi. Um, my name is Lisa Rodriguez. I'm from the University of San Diego Sponsored Programs Office. We weren't able to get into the Zoom, so I had to call in. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, hi. One question we have is um, because you already have a Southern California region, although it is primarily up in the Los Angeles area, um, is it would it be either a out of bounds for us to try and put something together to create a new region or b would we be you know maybe putting in a planning grant to join theirs um i mean it is a two and a half to three hour drive so you know it's not that far but <laughs> yeah yeah i mean I, I would encourage you to put a planning grant and to say that that you'd explore that I mean, the so the 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 Texas ones are, are also big drives, and um, what they've found is that their graduate students would sort of go for a full day to make it worthwhile. Okay. Um, and Shaquita just asked you a question. She's in the California Alliance at the moment. <coughs> so you were, uh, which which university in San Diego? The University of San Diego. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't have the Zoom, so I can't see the, yeah. what was posted. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, she, she posted a, thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it is, um, the, the way we try to define a region is, is sort of a sort of where is the sort of the natural, where graduate students are finding their, their faculty positions, right? Um, what is the, what is the sphere of that? Um, uh, as well as, you know, where's the natural partners, right? So, um, you know, you, you know, if your natural partners are the community colleges in San Diego and the current uh, Southern California doesn't have any reach or any overlap down to that region, then it might, might make sense for it to be separate. Um, okay. But it's pretty hard for me to judge uh, on the top of my head. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Tell me, can you tell me your name one more time? Yes, my name is Lisa Rodriguez, and I'm just within the Office of Sponsored Programs. Um, we're reaching out to various um, stakeholders within our campus administration to find out if this is something that um, is worth um, while, and so they thought that we would just call in and try and get some okay. information. Yep. Thank you. And if you ever have any questions afterwards, you can, you can drop me an email or send me a call. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I... Craig, Craig, there's a question in the chat about oh. Oh, yes. regions. Yeah, can regions cross lines? Yes, so we have, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a nascent um, collaboration sort of around the, the Oregon-Washington um, state border um, that, you know, makes perfect sense um, uh, because, you know, the, 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 those two cities are close um, so yes, it could be very much, you know, it doesn't have to be within the, within a state. Currently we're labeling the regions by the current states, but I think that's just an artifact of how it, how it developed. Uh, you, you might have to address subtleties about, um, you know, later down the line about what the requirements to teach at different um, uh, community college systems, but that's that's much later down the line. Yeah, I would just like to add a, a, a complimentary thought to the questions about what makes up a region. Um, we don't define what a region is. It's rather you're describing what your your region is and what makes your potential collaborative effective in making the case for why those partnerships would be very effective for your institutions and your your students in achieving the goals of the regional collaboratives that we outlined so making the case effectively that's defining your region for us 
Thank you. Ah, yeah. Um, so in Portland, you, the contact we have is is Kathy Carrigan at um, Portland uh, Community College. You'll have to help me with the official title. Somebody's frantically googly Kathleen. Uh, yeah, Portland Community. So it's Kathleen oh. Carrigan. Kathy Carrigan is at Portland Community College, although she's actually our uh, two-year chemistry professional society representative right. for the Aspire Alliance. So right. she plays a dual role. Right, but she's been working her colleagues to see if there's a interest in becoming a new region. So. All right, so you have my contact information, you have my contact information of um, Jamie Anderson, who's my co-lead on this. Um, and so, and you can also, I, I'm sure, you know, uh, find us via various Google searches. So, so if you do have any questions um, in the next uh, um, seven weeks before they're, 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 they're due, just, just let us know. Uh, we're, we're only too happy to help. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Good afternoon.